Hey, Hadi, how's it going? Got protein, that that's definitely a, a Big John rate. Yo, Big John, thank you very much for the host. How did your stream go? So welcome everybody from from John's stream. Um, so this is Wonder Boy. Uh, this is a remake of an old Sega Master System game. Um, I I am in the position of having both figured out some new strats and still being on the de-rust path, which is like the worst. So um, what you're going to find is that early on we've got some pretty heavy RNG manipulation, which is pretty fun. It guarantees us a couple of drops that we want. And, uh, and after that, it's just a matter of staying alive because the any percent root uh, definitely is super, super underpowered. And I'm presently not taking most of the safeties that I'll be taking if this isn't a marathon. Oh, that's not good. Thank you very much for the good luck. Yeah, and the remake is super good. It's on, like, everything now. Originally, it was just Switch and PS4, but now it's out on PC and I think also um, Xbox One. So the first big RNG manipulation, um, we're going to take a hit here, and that's going to give us a boomerang right now. And that boomerang is a big deal. extra two more um, I'm still working on RNG manipulation later on into this split so
No one bops for me. Yeah, you're not wrong there. I just realized that I've been screwing up. The kills count for two bites of RNG movement. Getting hit only counts for one. Take that. Good movement RNG so far. Alright, Kiraneko. Thanks for hanging out. Stellar damage RNG so far, too. Alright, so this is a split that's going to decide whether or not this run continues. Um, for the runs to be viable, I mean, if this were a marathon or a no reset run, uh, I would be fine, but... For the runs to be viable, we want two boomerangs. Because two boomerangs saves so much time. So there's... One known uh, consistent manipulation for a boomerang a couple of screens from now. And there are two backup manipulations that I still don't have down. backups now. Yeah, unfortunately most of the enemies in this game also find the, the little sword and shield adorable. Just to say it doesn't exactly do a whole lot. I'm going to continue. Doesn't hurt to have practice, but not having a boomerang at this point means that it's certainly not a, a particularly good run. Thank you very much, Tina Hex, for the subscription. And just as a reminder to everyone, um, any money that comes in from cheers, subscriptions, anything like that, uh, gets donated directly to the, uh, the Extra Life campaign that's linked in my stream info. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, Lucas, thanks for hanging out. Have a wonderful evening. Uh, D-Rust has been mostly good. I keep on finding new strats, which... I mean, since I'm rusty, I'm not having to unlearn old strats as much. But, uh... But learning new strats is not making it necessarily easier to finish runs. So I'm not going to go to retro mode, um, since there's new people here. Uh, that cutscene is what going to retro mode skips, which is why you'll see me swap to retro mode before every boss fight. Yo, Evan Grill. Yeah, yeah, I've got a sub button. I'm funneling any of the money from that to charity, so... to you to get some RGB cables. Well, the person that I normally recommend for RGB cables is um, uh, lives in Florida, which uh, which is holy cow! Even with no manipulation, we're still ahead. Nice. That's how bad my PB is. Anyway, um, the person that I normally recommend uh, lives in Florida and uh, as such is not presently in a great state to be able to, uh, to, to provide cables. Alright, so for those of you who don't know this run, uh, things are going to get a little bit weird pretty soon. I'm going to try and explain what's going on now before they do. So there is a entirely understandable programming error that the, the designers of the original game made, and the... Uh, and the remake decided to keep implemented. So, it turns out that whenever you turn left or right while you're either swimming or flying, you gain just a little bit of height, and that's understandable. It makes the movement kind of interesting. Uh, it also turns out that 
if you don't hit the jump button, the game never considers you having left the water. It turns out that those two things put together is kind of a bug that lets fish fly anywhere that they want to. Mix that with challenge rooms that force you into the, uh, the form of a bird that you're not supposed to get su until substantially later on in the game, and uh, you've got yourself a pretty good skip. I didn't purchase... Did I purchase a key? I purchased a key. Uh, I'm using the Pro Controller. The, the fish fly is not easy. Um, so it's not just mash as fast as you can, but it is mash substantially fast. But the ratio of time that you have uh, the button that you're mashing. So the way that you achieve it. Um, so in the original, the original ran at 30 frames per second, which made fish fly really easy. And uh, yeah, so in the original, um, you could do it with just a regular joystick. Unfortunately, it's not the case now. That was on purpose. Um, so now what you do is you hold the, um, the analog stick to the right and you mash the left D-pad input. I miscounted because I was talking. That's fine now. Too much money, not too little. It's a lot too much money. better. Thank you very much for the 10-bit cheer with the charity hashtag. So that's that's actually 10.02 bits that are gonna ultimately go to charity. And I think that that makes you a pretty fantastic person. Oof, that's bad. Okay, we're good though. We recovered. Yeah, I bought a super cheap um, RGB cable for my PS2 recently, and I'm just I'm gonna replace it with with a RCA cable when um, when RCA's store is back up and running. Because they're just they're so good. RCA cables are the best. So sometimes that first ninja will throw in an extra star and that'll screw up your, your rhythm, so...
Better not to tempt fate. It's technically possible to block the extra star and continue moving forward, but not worth the risk. Go stutter step here to manipulate these bats. This stun lock is like super, super scary. So the boomerang strat is completely new and it's really, really easy to screw up. Alright, so last dungeon is still super scary because we are way under leveled, way under, or not leveled, but way under geared, and, uh, and I'm not going for any safe strats. Uh, I might pick up a heart here to go for one safe strat. Of time, it's not that big a deal. It's frustrating. Uh, it's also frustrating. This is the hardest room in the game, so... And we did okay. Shoot. That was 
bad. Yeah, this game sold more on Switch than on any other system combined, but uh, the PC release uh, came substantially later than, uh, than any of the other releases. So my expectation is that ultimately the PC release is going to have that title. The more copies than all of them, uh, all of the others combined. That's double no good. Doesn't matter if I pick up a heart because I'm always a one hit kill. Alright, final boss time. That's a pretty okay improvement. Yo, thanks for the GG's, everyone. Uh, John Carls, why are these splits so good? Um, one of them I focused on just having cleaner gameplay, but on top of that, we've got a reliable manipulation for, well, we've got a reliable m manipulation for two boomerangs, but I screwed one of them up. Um, but on top of that, there's just, there's new strats that I'm going for. Um, if you compare this to the, the most recent recorded PB that I have, there's a, a pretty sizable difference. But I mean, this is a 27.25. My sum of best is 26.42. This still wasn't that good of a run. I'm going to do one more run before I cut stream. I've got to let the credits play out because this was a PB, but, but I'm going to do one more run before I cut. Let's see if we can't get both, um, both boomerangs in a run. Mavpin, you're not wrong. The soundtrack, uh, the art, really everything about this remake is so, so good. Categories am I going to submit? Uh, I figure I'll just submit 80% easy. It's, it's a safe run. It's a good run. It's got glitches. It's got RNG manipulation. Um, unfortunately hard, the RNG manipulation doesn't work, or I need to continue working to find one that does. And, uh, no major skips, the RNG manipulation is... we haven't figured it out yet because of the fact that we've got, you know, we're, uh... You know, we're not able to save and quit, which resets your RNG seed. But yeah, so it's got fish fly, it's got a major sequence break, which in turn skips like a fifth of the game. It's got RNG manipulation. Um, all of the bosses have stun locks on them, except for the very final one, which technically has a stun lock if you get lucky, and of course zombie dragon doesn't. Um, it's got, you know, really good tech in the, um, the mummy dragon fight where you can skip attack uh, segments. And on top of that, like, it sounds like I'll probably be able to have some dev commentary, so... Yeah, 
Yo, Hap, thank you very much for the congratulations. But yeah, I feel really good about submitting uh, any percent easy. I mean, half what you just did was you made it very clear that you type every emote that you use. I know that for me, I, I type like the first four letters of a given emote and then I hit tab. I This is, of, of all the games that I'm planning on submitting, this is a single game that I feel the strongest about. I really, really hope that this one gets in. Monster World 4 I love and the sequence breaks and the fact that you glitch the game out and like corrupt a sprite in the process. It's super cool. It's a neat run. And I really enjoy running that game. Um, and if it were to be in a GDQ, I think that we'd probably get like maybe five or 10 people that actually join um, this game or uh, five or 10 people that, that joined the community and started running it. But this game, this game I feel has a real shot at becoming, like, not huge, but, you know, probably a good couple dozen people joining from a GDQ run. Uh, what games am I submitting? I will be submitting this game. Uh, Gargoyles Quest is a race against Rogue Link. Um, Monster World 4. Uh, any percent or debug merchant, depending on who you ask. Um, I might submit Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. I submitted last GDQ and it didn't get in, but it's still a fun run, and I think that it's, it's worth submitting again. And I'm considering submitting wack Wacky Races on the PC, or PC, on the NES. Um, wacky Races is another one of those games that... It, it's a game that I used to 1cc when I was a little kid, and... It has a lot of sentimental value to me. Realistically, if it gets in, I feel like they're probably going to put it in Awful Block, even though it's... It's like, it's mediocre, if I'm being super honest. It's a it's a fairly mediocre game. It's fun. It's not broken. It's, you know... But it's, it's not a great game. But for that reason, I suspect that it probably won't get in at all. Um, realistically, it's... It's probably not bad enough to really be a solid awful block contender, and it's not good enough to be a non-awful block contender. They wouldn't put Wacky Races in- Yeah, but that's the thing, John. I feel like Wacky Races isn't good enough to not be an awful block. Because the graphics are, like, kind of... Eh. Even, even as an NES game, the graphics are sort of... I, so John, I hear you, and I personally, I, I also regard that game as, as quite good and extremely fun to play, but I submit to you that most people don't know that game, and when they see it at first, and they hear the music, which, again, melody-wise, it's great, but it's not particularly complex or anything like that, even on the scale of NES games, and they see the graphics... I, I think that most people who don't know the game, which is going to be the majority of stream watchers, they're not going to think that it's a great game. Because, yeah, I, I would say, yeah, 7 out of 10 sounds fair as somebody who's played it. Ooh, early morning NES block. Okay, that's, that's a fair point. 